The examination of the precordium is often the primary focus of an OSCE. If asked to examine a patient's precordium, start your exam with general inspection from the end of the bed and then move on to closer inspection of the patient's chest. During closer inspection, you may more clearly see scars, skeletal abnormalities, implantable cardiac devices, ECG or telemetry stickers, or an apex beat. Palpate first for the apex beat. This is the most inferior lateral point where the pulsation of the heart is palpable. When it is found, identify its anatomical location to determine if it is displaced. It should be located in the fifth left intercostal space on the midclavicular line. If it is impalpable, locate the fifth left intercostal space on the midclavicular line as the first location for auscultation. Feel for thrills, which are palpable murmurs. Next, feel for parasternal heave, which is evident in right ventricular hypertrophy. Percussion is not done in the cardiology exam. Okay, Sarah, now I'm going to examine your the following is the simplest approach to auscultation of the precordium. Using your left hand, palpate the carotid pulse so that systole and diastole are distinguishable. Start with the diaphragm of your stethoscope and listen to the heart in the following sequence. Apex, tricuspid area, aortic area, pulmonary area, carotid arteries. Change to the bell of your stethoscope and listen to the heart in the same sequence. Apex, tricuspid area, aortic area, pulmonary area, carotid arteries. If a murmur is heard, comment on where it is loudest. Where does it radiate to? Is it systolic or diastolic? What grade is it? And describe its intensity, pitch or any other features. So Tara, I need you to do a couple of breathing exercises for me. Uh, I'm going to get you to take a big breath in and then breathe out, all the way out, and then just hold it with the breath out. Dynamic manoeuvres are performed to accentuate any murmurs that may be present. For mitral regurgitation, without moving the patient, listen with the diaphragm in the axilla with the patient in full expiration. I'm going to get you to do that again where you take a breath in, then let it out all the way and then hold it out. For mitral stenosis, place the bell on the mitral area. Move the patient into the left lateral decubitus position in full expiration. Thank you. You can come back here again. I get you to catch your breath. So I need to do the same thing again whenever you're ready. For aortic stenosis, Place the diaphragm over the carotids in full expiration. Aortic stenosis will be heard loudly in both carotids, unlike carotid bruise. Okay, you can catch your breath. And I guess do it one more time, but this time I want you to sit forward. For aortic regurgitation, ask the patient to sit forward and listen over the left lower sternal border with the diaphragm in full expiration. <laughs> 